Hello everyone, I have important news. A killer fungus has spread throughout the world. Even now, it threatens to consume us all. It is resistant to drugs. It may, in fact, take over. This is a story about the real drug-resistant fungus you've never heard of. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Obvious bringing you the obvious. And today on the New York Times. A mysterious infection spanning the globe in a climate of secrecy. The rise of Candida iris, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, embodies a serious and growing public health threat. Drug-resistant germs. This is actually a pretty crazy story. Bacteria are rebelling. They're turning the tide against antibiotics by outsmarting our wonder drugs. This video explores the surprising reasons. And of course, I can't actually play that because this is the archive, but uh, let's see what this article has to say. Last May, an elderly man was admitted to the Brooklyn branch of Mount Sinai Hospital for abdominal surgery. A blood test revealed that he was infected with a newly discovered germ, as deadly as it was mysterious. Doctors swiftly isolated him in the intensive care unit. The germ, a fungus called Candida iris, preys on people with weakened immune systems, and it is quietly spreading across the globe. Over the last five years, it has hit a neonatal unit in Venezuela, swept through a hospital in Spain, forced a prestigious British medical center to shut down its intensive care unit, and taken root in India, Pakistan, and South Africa. So this thing is spreading like crazy. It's absolutely going everywhere. And it's a fungus, which I find fascinating. I actually have an incredible fascination with fungi. They're an amazing species, neither plant nor animal. Very unique. They're nature's recyclers. They're capable of breaking down things that no other organism on earth, including many bacteria, would be able to break down. In fact, did you know that the first creatures on land, were, they weren't fish with legs and fin legs. They weren't plants. The first creatures on land were fungi. It created the soil. It created the earth by breaking down rocks into smaller materials. They basically pave the way for everything. All of life is built on fungi. It's a fascinating subject, and I love talking about it. So this fungus has been deemed a urgent threat. That's how bad it is. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention added it to the threat list. The man, by the way, who was infected, died after 90 days in the hospital. But get this, because this is insane. But C. Aris did not. Tests showed it was everywhere in his room. So invasive, the hospital needed special cleaning equipment and they had to rip out some of the ceiling and floor tiles to eradicate it. That's actually extremely scary. You know, the whole Last of Us thing is just a joke. This is obviously not a zombie fungus, but this may as well be as contagious because it sounds like this thing is airborne. In stopping spores, spores are tiny. They can literally float through the air, and fungi releases countless of them. Probably millions. It's countless. This is worse, uh, in my opinion, this is actually worse than any germs. Because once a fungi goes airborne and it starts infecting people, now you're in some serious trouble. Fungi is nature's recycler. It's, it breaks things down. So if this is spreading to humans, it's going to be breaking down humans. Oh, this is bad. This is... <laughs> we better hope it doesn't mutate. Everything was positive. The walls, the bed, the doors, the curtains, the phones, the sink, the whiteboard, the poles, the pump, said Dr. Scott Lauren, the hospital president. The mattress, the bed rails, the ha the canister holes, the window shades, the ceiling, everything in the room was positive. Woo! That sounds so bad. Think about it, folks. Tiny little spores that you can't even see could be everywhere around you. There's probably, there actually is spores in the air right now that you're breathing in. Now imagine spores that can actually take root in your lungs, get into your bloodstream, infect your entire body, and even after 90 days of treatment, cause you to cease being alive. This is where we're at, folks. C. Aris is so tenacious in part because it's impervious to major antifungal medications, making it a new example of one of the world's most intractable health threats, the rise of drug-resistant infections, and fungi is actually really well adapt and really they're really good at becoming resistant to things it's actually incredible in fact one of the entire reasons that we have antibiotics you know penicillin 
Where do you think that comes from? Fungi, fungus. Fungi produces all sorts of things, including antibiotics. Here, let's take a look. Penicillium. Penicillium ascomycetos fungi are of major importance in the natural environment, as well as food and drug protection. Some members of the genus produce penicillin, a molecule that is used as an antibiotic, which kills or stops growth of certain kinds of bacteria. Other species are used in cheese making. This is what I meant about the amazing capability of fungi. It's incredible what these creatures can do. Dr. Sean Lockhart, a fungal disease expert at the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, holding a microscope slide with inactive Candida eris collected from an American patient. For decades, public health experts have warned the overuse of antibiotics was reducing the effectiveness of drugs that lengthened lifespans by curing bacterial infections, once commonly fatal. But lately, there has been an explosion of resistant fungi as well, adding a new and frightening dimension to a phenomenon that is undermining a pillar of modern medicine. It's an enormous problem, said Matthew Fisher, a professor of fungal epidemiology at Imperial College of London, who was a co-author of a recent scientific scientific review on the rise of resistant fungi. We depend on being able to treat those patients with antifungals. Simply put, fungi, just like bacteria, are evolving defenses to survive modern medicine. Yet, even as world health leaders have pleaded for more restraint in prescribing antimicrobial drugs to combat bacteria and fungi, convening the United Nations General Assembly in 2016 to manage an emerging crisis, gluttonous overuse of them in hospitals, clinics, and farming has continued. So yeah, I, I remember actually there was an entire episode on house about this overuse of antibiotics i mean it's so bad that our meat and milk has antibiotics because they pump cows full of uh antibiotics you know as opposed to actually taking care of them making sure they're sanitary making sure they have space giving them humane conditions all that good stuff it is much easier just to pump them full of drugs. Not to mention the growth hormone. So when you drink milk, not only are you getting a dose of antibiotics, you're getting growth hormone. Same thing with meat. Resistant germs are often called superbugs, but this is simplistic because they don't typically kill everyone. Instead, they are the most lethal to people with immature or compromised immune systems, including newborns and the elderly, smokers, diabetics, and people with autoimmune disorders who take steroids that suppress the body's defenses. So basically, it's a race against the clock. Scientists are forced to continually try to create new, more powerful weapons, new medicines. Unfortunately, this kind of accelerates the problem. So humanity is going to be in some big, big trouble in the future because we we played God, basically, and decided that we could use this miraculous technology instead of only saving it for emergencies. We use it way too much. And now it's a huge problem. And now we have killer fungus, killer mushrooms spreading throughout the air, spreading throughout the airwaves, and coming to take us all, to destroy destroy us all. It sounds like a science fiction, like dystopian movie, but it's real. We're in it, folks. You know, I've often said this, but we were born just in time to watch the apocalypse, to watch the world fall apart. Doesn't it feel good to be a millennial, to be a Zoomer, to be alive in this era? Dr. Joanna Rhodes, an infectious disease expert at Imperial College of London said, we are driving this with the use of antifungicides on crops, she said of drug resistant germs. So this is our fault, no surprise. We keep using the antifungals on crops. This is causing them to evolve faster and more efficiently. And this is why we have such an insane outbreak. So in the United States alone, two million people country Tract resistant infections annually. 23,000 die from them. I don't know how many of that is fungi, but it's probably a good amount. So they use them in people. Like I said earlier, they use them in farm animals. They use it on the plants. <laughs> this is getting really bad. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is interesting. Yet, as the problem grows, it is little understood by the public in part because the very existence of resistant infections is often cloaked in secrecy. With bacteria and fungal alike, hospitals and local governments are reluctant to disclose outbreaks for fear of being seen as infection hubs. Even the CDC, under its agreements with states, is not allowed to make public the location or names of hospitals involved in outbreaks. That's absolutely insane political garbage. What? Okay, so any sane person would know that all hospitals are hubs for infections and bacteria. And if you go to one to be extremely careful to basically wash your entire body to keep very clean, because yeah, it's full of sick people. Of course, it's going to be full of sick people. I mean, I expect it to be an infection hub. I expect outbreaks in a hospital. And that's part of the problem. They try to keep clean, so they use a bunch of antibacterial. This is why all the germs are evolving and soon will be unstoppable. I mean, what happens when you have the one punch man 
of infection. We are finished. So even though that this, you know, this virus, C. aris, which infected the man at Mount Sinai, is one of the dozens of dangerous bacteria and fungi that have developed resistance, yet, like most of them, it is a threat that is virtually unknown to the public. So people don't even know about this. Like, people don't even know it's a thing. And I only know about it because I'm so interested in fungi and fungus and fungi culture. Fascinating subject to me. But most people are completely unaware. We could have a major epidemic. And I'm not just talking. They said Africa. I think United States is on the map. Yeah, Illinois. It's spreading. It's spreading and it's in major populated areas. Dr. Lynn Sosa, Connecticut's deputy state epidemiologist, said she now saw C. aris as a top threat among resistant infections. It's pretty much unbeatable and difficult to identify, she said. Nearly half of the patients who contract C. aris die within 90 days, according to the CDC. Yet the world's experts have not nailed down where it even comes from? It's a creature from the Black Lagoon, said Dr. Tom Chiller, who heads the fungal branch of the CDC which is spearheading a global detective effort to find treatments and stop the spread. It's bubbled up and now it's everywhere. So, maybe this fungus is from outer space. Maybe it was sent by the aliens to destroy us all. Maybe, just maybe. But no, most likely it actually came from Earth. It, it came from a place and it mutated because that's happened before, especially with these outbreaks like, like the avian flu. Maybe it's only a bird flu, but then it evolves and it mutates and it spreads to humans. That's happened before. Probably the same thing with this fungus. It's probably going to come from some place where it used to never be a problem, but then it evolved. Now it's everywhere. They don't even know where it comes from. <laughs> I mean, that's terrifying. We have no idea where it's coming from. We've never heard of it. It's just spread like wildfire, Dr. Rhodes said she was told. So she agreed to help the hospitals and try to eradicate it. This is what they did. Under her direction, the hospital workers used a special device to spray aerosolized hydrogen peroxide around a room used for a patient. With C. aris, the theory being that the vapor would scour each nook and cranny. They left the device going for a week. Then they put a settle plate in the middle of the room with a gel at the bottom that would serve as a place for any surviving microbes to grow. Dr. Rhodes said, only one organism grew back, C. aris. So the worst part about this is it's spreading to hospitals everywhere, but they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to be seen is bad. This is only going to cause a problem. The public needs to know so that there can be outcry and call for research so the government can get off their lazy overgrown butts and actually give some scientific research money so that we can fight this fungus because if not it could very well destroy us. And the article just goes on and on uh, on about it. And look what it says here coming to America. It's already been in Illinois, New York, and New Jersey. Yeah th this thing is going to explode. It's going to be everywhere and it, this is frightening because 90 days, you could get this, like you could contact the spores, it could get inside you, it, you get infected and then you die. Luckily, it seems to only target people with weakened immune systems, so that's a relief. If you have a weakened immune system, you're at risk. Oh, do what you can, folks, do what you can to protect yourselves. Just wanna let you guys know what's going on. Be mindful, be safe, and be healthy. Hopefully people find a way to beat this thing because if not <laughs> crazy killer fungus on the loose spreading throughout the lands threatening to devour us all what a world we live in it might actually be insane but that's merely the obvious well that's all for today folks what do you think about this killer fungus what are your theories where did it come from let me know what you think um yeah i think this is this is a serious issue it's it's uh, it's crazy anyways i want to thank you for watching if you would like to support the content you can do so on patreon subscribe star or through paypal this has been mr obvious and i'll see you all next time